Welcome to Learnpedia, the 24-7 JE Neat resource at your fingertips. Now take a look at this actual Neat exam question and see if you can answer it. If you think you got the answer, please post it below in the comment section. To know the best way to answer this question, continue watching this video further. First of all, kinetic energy of rotation. In the figure, we have a rigid body. It is going to move in a pure rotational motion. All of its constituent particles move on a circular path with radius r1, r2, r3 and so on so forth r1. Their linear velocities are shown v1, v2, v3, v4, vn. Masses of these bodies are m1, m2, m3, m4, so on so forth mn. Let us consider this is the axis of rotation about which these particles are going to move. That means the first particle let us consider is at a distance of r1. The second particle is at a distance of say r2. Third particle is at a distance of r3. Fourth particle we take at a distance of r4. Fifth particle or so on so forth nth particle as a distance of rn. When they rotate about the main point, how is the rotation because each and every point or particle is moving in a circular motion. About this point, the rigid body is moving in a circular motion. Masses m1, m2, m3, m4, mn are at a distance of r1, r2, r3, r4, rn and their velocity is tangentially at this point v1, v2, v3, v4 and vn and as a whole rigid body completes one rotation about this fixed point. So then in that condition, when a rigid body describes pure rotational motion, then the kinetic energy of the system is given by the kinetic energy of individual particles will add it up. Half of m1 v1 square plus half of m2 v2 square plus so on so forth. Half of mn v n square. Now as we know v is equal to r omega. Angular velocity of every particle is same. So we can write v1 is equal to r1 omega, v2 is equal to r2 omega and so on so forth. Then kinetic energy we can write it as half of m1 r1 square omega square plus half of m2 r2 square omega square so on so forth half of mn rn square omega square. So since it is in rotation about this point with an angular velocity omega, it's a pure rotation. See the body is revolving about this point O. As a whole this rigid body moves. Angular velocity of all the particles is same. So we can write this formula as again half of m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square so on so forth mn r n square into omega square. Omega square is common. This will be the kinetic energy of rotation. So this kinetic energy we can write it as half of the term in the bracket m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square so on so forth mn r n square is called rotational inertia or movement of inertia of the system of particles of the body. This rotational inertia we can substitute as capital I into omega square. As we compare this with the kinetic energy of translation, it is half of mv square. So if v is the translational velocity of the body, omega is the rotational velocity or angular velocity of the body, then whatever role this m plays in a translation motion, that is the mass of the body or we can also call the inertia possessed by the body, mass is the measure of inertia. In a similar manner, in rotational motion, this i will be the inertia of the rotating body and this i is called rotational inertia. So in translation motion, the body if it has velocity v, in rotational motion its equivalent is angular velocity omega. In translation motion measure of inertia is the mass. Here in rotational motion the measure of inertia will be i. It is also called rotational inertia. Then the kinetic energy of rotation we can write half of a omega square whereas the kinetic energy of translation will be half of mv square. Now let us calculate 
moment of inertia of a uniform solid sphere about the diameter. So let us consider this is a uniform solid sphere and is rotating about this diameter. So since we know the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere about the diameter, this is the axis passing through the diameter. So since we know uniform hollow sphere moment of inertia about a diameter, we can cut this solid sphere in terms of many many hollow spheres. One such hollow sphere let us consider is cut like this. This is the hollow sphere which we have cut in this solid sphere. Since we know the moment of inertia of the hollow sphere, we can take as the starting point. Let us take the radius of this hollow sphere which we have cut is x and thickness dx. So one of the hollow sphere I have shown. Like this when x is equal to 0 to x is equal to r, many many hollow spheres we can make it and all those hollow spheres we can consider by taking one this one of the hollow sphere and integrating it. Now the mass of the solid sphere let us assume as capital M, radius capital R. Mass of hollow sphere which we have cut is dm and its radius is x. Then what is dm? dm is equal to m by 4 by 3 pi r cube into 4 pi x square dx. That can be written as 3m by r cube times of x square dx. Now, moment of inertia of the hollow sphere, we know, i is equal to, for hollow sphere, i is equal to 2 by 3 m r square. So, this we will take it as the starting point. So, d i is equal to 2 by 3 into the mass of this hollow sphere, that is dm into x square. So, let us substitute the value of dm and x. The d i is equal to 2 by 3 into dm, 3m by r cube times of x square dx into x square. This is the moment of inertia of the hollow sphere. This can be simplified and written as 2m by r cube x to the power 4 dx. Let us integrate to get the value of i. i is equal to 2m by r cube we can take it out. Integration 0 to capital R x to the power 4 dx 2m by capital R cube. This can be written as x to the power 5 by 5 from 0 to capital R. Or we can get 2m by r cube capital R to the power 5 by 5. Or finally, moment of inertia will be 2 by 5 m r square. So, moment of inertia of a solid sphere is 2 by 5 m r square. Whereas, of the hollow sphere, we got it as 2 by 3 m r square about a diameter. Axis passing through the center about a diameter. Moment of inertia of solid sphere is 2 by 5 m r square. Second, a thick rod or of a uniform cylinder. So, if suppose I take a uniform cylinder about a geometrical axis, if we consider like this. Now, we want to calculate the moment of inertia of the uniform solid cylinder about geometrical axis. What we can do over here is, we can construct a hollow cylinder since we know the moment of inertia of the hollow cylinder. Let us consider a hollow cylinder is cut from this solid cylinder. Let us take from the axis, this distance of the hollow cylinder or the radius of the hollow cylinder is x and thickness dx. Mass of solid cylinder is m, radius capital R. Rho is mass per unit volume. m by pi r square l is the density of this cylinder. Such that we can write dm for this hollow cylinder which we have cut it off here. dm will be total mass by pi r square l into the area of the cylinder such that we can calculate the total circumference into thickness into the length. We will get the perimeter of the complete cylinder. So, it is equal to 2 pi x dx into l. So, that we can write dm is equal to 2 m by r square into x dx cancelling out l. So, it is independent of l. Now, starting with moment of inertia of this hollow cylinder as the starting point of the calculation of moment of inertia of solid cylinder. Because we can generate hollow cylinders right from the center like this one hollow cylinder, second hollow cylinder, like this the third hollow cylinder till from 0 to capital R. So, moment of inertia of the given hollow cylinder 
it will be equal to integration of now the mass of hollow cylinder is dm into dm into its radius that is r square this is movement of inertia of the hollow cylinder which we have generated now this becomes our starting point so now dm we will substitute as the mass of this hollow cylinder x as the coordinate of the hollow cylinder and this x is the variable right from 0 to capital R where capital R is the radius of the solid cylinder so we have taken elements of like in the shape of a hollow cylinder we have cut this solid cylinder into many many small hollow cylinders and we started with moment of inertia of the hollow cylinder so i will be equal to integration 0 to capital R 2m by r square x dx into the coordinate x square or simply we can write 2m by r square integration of x cube dx 0 to r on integrating we get moment of inertia i is equal to 2m by r square into integration of x cube x to the power 4 by 4 from 0 to r substituting we get it m r square by 2 so moment of inertia of a uniform solid cylinder about the geometrical axis is m r square by 2 I hope you can answer the question now. Please take a look at the solution. Found this video useful? Hit the like and share icons to enjoy much more videos. LearnPedia's JE and Meet preparation tool contains more than 4,000 videos and 20,000 plus questions. Accessible online on our website and offline on an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit learnpedia.in. You can try our product before buying it.